Hey folks, and welcome to Subjective Thoughts. And our comic for today is Showcase 96, Issue 6, by DC Comics. Now there is fighting, magic, blood, suicide attempt, alcoholism, uh, rehab, drugs, um, weird shit, uh, eh, possibly hallucinations, maybe. And uh, going into someone's body in this one, so if you are in any way squeamish, you have been warned. Also, spoilers. Alrighty then. So, this is the uh, second showcase uh, comic I've ever read. Um, the first one I read was about, um, oh man, the, the gentleman who replaced Batman after his back broke. Uh, I, I'm blacking out on his name right now. I'll leave it here on the screen uh, later on. But yes, that one. And that was the only one I read. And that was the first one I read. I remember quite liking it. <coughs> quite liking it, sorry. It was very interesting. And now this I uh, borrowed from my friend, so I will not be opening it. I'll show you the art uh, later on the screen. Right, so this one, when I first got it, I saw, you know, ooh, Etrigan and Superboy. I got uh, very excited to read some Etrigan. Then, you know, with Superboy, too, I, I dig that uh, Superboy costume as well. Very cool. So I borrowed it from my friend. It's been lying around for a bit, and I finally got my ass around to reading it. So the, this one it doesn't just have uh, Etrigan and uh, Superboy. Because when I looked at the title, I thought it was going to be also Firestorm with the Atom. The the Atom. But I, I should have noticed there's a dot here and not an uh, end symbol. So these are three stories in one. So I'm going to talk about each one in the video. So let's get started. Right, so the first one with the Superboy and Etrigan is... Super symmetry. Symmetry. Yeah, I, I think. I hope I'm not uh, misreading this word. That tends to happen to me sometimes. It also says a special episode of Superboy, uh, the animated series. I didn't know there was an animated series. I gotta check that out. Yeah, so uh, Super Symmetry. I will uh, leave the name on screen, the picture. And, um, the creators. All right, and not creators. So, um, yeah, I'll leave, uh, I'll leave everything, uh, the writers and everyone on screen as well to save some time because this is also going to be a long one. Um,. Don't really uh, recognize any one of the creators here. Anyway, yeah, it'll be on the it'll be on screen uh, about now. So that's the first story. Uh, Superboy goes to this gentleman's uh, laboratory. He's there for a checkup or something. This uh, scientist, I already for I already forgot his name, but I'm terrible with names. Um, obviously doesn't seem to like him, tells him not to touch anything, to just, you know, let them finish the checkup or whatever. This Superman's a clone, and, and I don't know that much about this character. Are there, like, different Superboys? Multiple? I don't know. Anyway, the Superboy, uh, opens a cabinet and takes out a dagger out of it. Starts messing with it and uh, ends up uh, cutting himself. And then the um, the prof oh, the, the scientist guy starts to say something. And then uh, Superboy wakes up in uh, well, how should I put it? He wakes up in Jason uh, Jason Blood, right? That's uh, the not Ultra Ego. Ugh, I got, I got myself confused now. I, anyway, he loses 
It looks like he loses consciousness from the getting cut by the magical knife. As we all know, the super people of Krypton don't do magic well. Uh, he um, he wakes up with Jason Blood looking at him. That's Etrigan's uh, who, whose body he inhabits. Yeah, the, yeah, because Etrig uh, Jason Blood has been cursed with him. I hope I, I hope I remember his first name correctly. I hope it is Jason. But yes, um, Jason Jason Blood tells him that. Uh, well, they see that uh, Superboy's cut didn't heal. He keeps bleeding out, and they need to do something about it, or else he's going to bleed to death. Jason Blood tells them they have to go and get the knife and do the ritual to close the um, the cut. That something has also been stolen from Etrigan. Anyway, he and uh, Jason Blood go back to the laboratory, they go in, it's empty, Jason Blood goes forward, gets stuck in some invisible force field, Superboy can't hear him, uh, and then pops out the scientist guy, who turns out to be our bad guy for the story, he created a hum human naculous uh, being, and I guess maybe kind of like the golem. He created a, well, I guess a magical sort of Superboy. Um, Superboy tries to fly at him and stop him, but uh, obviously it doesn't work magic. He gets flinged off from the force field. Uh, Jason Blood says that, I guess he says the, uh, the spell, or what it is that makes uh, Etrigan appear. Etrigan, uh, he I mean not appear, he turns into Etrigan. And Etrigan goes at the scientist guy, all angry, you stole from me, and I will make you pay. Superboy's bleeding again, and obviously very confused. He wasn't really paying attention that well when Jason Blood told him that, uh, you know, he needs, uh, <laughs> he needs to run if, uh, if he turns into Etrigan. Eh, what, what, what are you gonna do, right? Um, then Etrigan... And then Etrigan sees the human Aculus. Uh, the evil scientist dude calls him to him to protect him from Etrigan. He, uh, the human, human Aculus, uh, let's call him Guy, shoots a, shoots a magic being at him. But there's no match to Etrigan. Etrigan's about to uh, crush him. He says, are you going to use him for evil purposes to the scientist guy? And the scientist guy's like all enthusiastically, yes, yes. I'm going to use him for domination. I'm going to kill people. I'm going to get money. This seems to please Etrigan. And uh, before he disappears, he wants to disappear, but uh, Superboy tells him, wait, you're not going anywhere until I don't get my dagger. Or until I don't get that dagger. Then Etrigan tells him a riddle, supposedly, or a clue, gives him a clue. And then he disappears. The evil scientist guy is about to tell the human Aculus uh, guy to uh, kill him. And then Superboy figures it out, says, ah, of course. Um, he said something, you know, it's, it's in you, that the dagger's in you. Well, when he said that, I was like, ah, so it's in the, uh, it's in the human, human Aculus guy, isn't it? And yeah, it is, he punches a hole through his chest, apologizing, takes the dagger out, then Flash, and uh, Superboy's cut is healed. The Humaculous uh, guy is gone, and uh, Superboy grabs the scientist guy and tells him, you've got some explaining to do to my girlfriend, because she's never going to believe me. And uh, well, obviously the old scientist guy is uh, humiliated for, he thinks first he's going to be taken to the police, which I guess going to the girlfriend would be even more humiliating. And that's it. That's the end of the story. It was okay. You know, got me a, a taste of Etrigan. Though. 
wasn't as cool as I was hoping it would be. I mean, look at this cover. He thinks some shit's about to go down. Not, not really. Not really. I'll show you the art now. Uh, in like two pages. Yeah, it's okay. In some places, it didn't look really good. And they, uh, it, it really annoys me when, you know, you have like a profile view and they don't add the pupil. And it looks like the eye is completely white. Now, I get it depending on the turn of the head. And you, you might not see it. But here, you will see it. And it, it annoys me. It really does. I don't know why, but it just does. But yeah, overall, the art's okay. The pacing wasn't really good at times. It was too quick. One second, Jason's blood is saying, you know, that, uh, that s sentence and... I get it, you know, maybe he turns immediately, but still, it feels like they should have made it a bit slower, added some more panels. I think they should have just cut out one story out of the other two and just added more to this. But it is what it is. It was okay. It was cool to see Atrogan. And Superboy. Other than that, I didn't fall out of my wheelchair with amazement. Right, on to the uh, second story then. Second story is called. Um, Alright, there we go. Uh, Firestorms. Uh, sorry, Storms. Uh, il, uh, slearing. Cellaring. Storms Cellaring. Uh. I think I'm so tired of reading words wrong, but they'll appear here on the screen. Part 1, Dying Out. And now the creators are... I'll also leave them here now on screen. Um, again, I didn't really recognize anyone. Alright, um... So this is a story of a, a firestorm. About firestorm, I mean. Where the... He's, he's admitted himself to a rehab center of some kind. Pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a rehab center. Uh, he goes there um, oh, willingly. He goes there, we, you know, we see him... Uh, the story starts with him having a weird, uh, uh, sort of, a very bad dream. We see him playing football, his dad being proud of him, then... See a married couple, all this talk about grown ups, then two kids appear, and it's a uh, little firestorm as a kid, and the little girl, they start running away. Uh, firestorm, the adult, is chasing them. Uh, then they go up to jump into a pool, and Firestorm uh, tells them, No, don't do it, it's irresponsible. But they still go, and he tells them, Ah, oh, you held us all out. Oh, sorry. That's what made today. You held us uh, back too long because when they jump, instead of water, it turns into something else. I think they were referencing candy. But I'm quite confused. It looked like water before. I don't know. Firestorm tries to do something, but it only makes the Apparently chocolate very hard and it's like rocks now and then he wakes up with uh, so, someone flashing a light on him in the uh, rehab center They check on them every two hours Then we see how he got in there. We see him, you know, getting the tour of uh, Getting a tour and how things are gonna go, you know breakfast and there's group and all that stuff then we reach group where, um, you know, they'll talk. It's interesting, as you go through the art, you see some people, smoke coming out of them, some bubbles. Very weird. Um, we get to, to them having group, and, you know, every, they say um, everyone has uh, the, their breaking point, their uh, rock bottom. And uh, Firestorm starts uh, saying, no, nah, you know, I didn't... It, his name here, though, they call him Ron. I think, yeah, Ron. Now, uh, to be fair, I don't really know much about Firestorm. That really, or that well about his powers. 
So, I didn't understand uh, some stuff very well. I guess I assumed with his name and his power had to do with fire, but not, it looks like not necessarily. I'm thinking about it, I think Mr. Gray, did he mention there are two firestorms or just one? I don't know. Anyway, he, um, now obviously here he's, he's in his, I guess, uh, you know, his human uh, identity. <laughs> I'm the identity of Firestorm. My dad's coughing in the background. It is a uh, Firestorm, not his Firestorm uh, form. And so he tells them uh, why, what made him realize he needs to get into rehab. Now he masks it as him doing charity. Obviously he's not gonna tell him he's a superhero. So he tells him, I, you know, I had this big uh, assignment or I, I guess he and other superheroes in the league were, and not in the league. I don't remember where he was. He and other superheroes, um, I don't know, saved maybe a planet, something else. And he was told that, uh, I think he was told by Apollo. It looked like the old design of Apollo, but I'm not sure. It was told, you know, your drinking is starting to affect you. To affect, uh, you know, you saving other people. And the Firestorm didn't uh, understand it then. He didn't listen, as he says. Then we see him, he says, after that I went to, you know, vent out. He's flying in the sky with a six pack of, uh, uh, six ca beer cans in the pack. And then he spots trouble, uh, a young couple. There's something wrong with their car and they're about, and they're, going down the road where there's a, they're on a mountain and he flies after them to save them and then they uh, fly off of the uh, mountain he keeps flying towards them he's trying to use his powers to make a mattress to cushion their fall to save them but he makes jelly for some reason they yell oh no it's jello the, the couple and and they crash and die. I think maybe that's what uh, the dream in the beginning meant. Maybe that that's what he was. Uh, yeah, that's what that's what got into his uh, his subconscious. So he, he tells the group that the masking it that after that he realized he was still holding his six pack of beer, and that made him realize he needs to do something. He has to go into rehab. Uh, then the doctor, psychologist, I'm going to say psychologist lady says, well, we need, we need to see when to put the blame on, but uh, admitting it is the first step. When you're going to get to rehab, that's where the real work is going to start. Or the real uh, problem solving is going to start. And that's it. That's where the story ends. I'll show you the art now. I really didn't like this art style. I mean, I get why they did it. It fits very well with the theme of the story and how it goes. But I just found it really ugly in most in most panels. Some look pretty okay, but that's just a personal taste. Personally, I found it really ugly. I didn't like it. The overall, the story was okay. I mean, interesting. I oh, also, um, Firestorm's a model in this one. Okay. I obviously need to educate myself more about Firestorm. I have no idea. Oh yeah, he was sick with cancer, with leukemia, and then I guess him getting his powers saved him, gave him a second chance. But that was the reason why he would drink before. It was just living every day because, you know, that I'm going to die, so fuck it. So, I mean, it was interesting. Again, can't say I fell out of my seat with amazement. And then the last story, we are with the the Adam, uh, Roy Pal Plummer? Palmer? Roy or Ray Palmer? Not sure. But yes, he's standing outside a high school. Um, something made him turn 17 again, even though he's supposed to now be in his 30s. He decides to um, 
to sneak into the party anyway. Because he can't go there like that, because, you know, obviously now he's 17. You know, the art style, it kind of looks 40, I have to say. But alright. Um, you, know, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna get to the art before I continue. The art was fine. I guess out of the three here, it was, was a bit better. Still can't say I was crazy about it, but it was okay. But in the image I'm gonna show you now, look, look at his hands. They look the same shade, in, like in the, in the middle panel, as his, uh, as his face. But he's clearly wearing his uh, Adam suit. Literally, what? No one noticed this. It's a, I get it, it's shadow, but you're supposed to still make it the same color. It looks like he's not wearing any gloves. When I looked, I was like, wait, where are his gloves now? Well, you know, he's just wearing a full suit, but still. Like, come on, no one noticed that. No one. Oh, shit. I, for I forgot to say, uh... I forgot to even tell you what the story is. The uh, story's called, sorry. Ah, you know what, I'll, I'll say it right now and put it here. So the story's called Reunion, appropriate. And, uh, again, I don't really recognize anyone from here, but they'll... You'll see the picture on screen uh, now of the name and the um, and the people who who did what. <laughs> Sorry about that. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just uh, no one noticed. No one. Come on. That anyway. Th that aside, the hour was fine. Back to the story. So uh, I'm just gonna call him Adam or Palmer. Palmer. I'm gonna call him Palmer. So Palmer, um, he just uh, puts on his uh, head, uh, not head, uh, but, uh, yeah, puts on his costume fully, covers his head, shrinks and flies into the, um, into the high school, you know, he's floating to himself because the AC's on full power, and he sees a picture of himself uh, with his uh, then prom date, uh, Jen, and Jen, uh, she looks very pretty, he tells himself, man, I look like such a dork in that tuxedo. Then he goes to the sort of reception table and looks to see if Jen is there. He sees that she is and he's excited to see her because back then uh, she wanted to be a dancer and things. He, um, what does he do? Well, he flies into the room looking for his thing. I'm gonna find her easily. She'll probably be at the center of attention. But she's not. Uh, everyone's partying. She's sitting there. All lonely. Her hair is short now. Um, now the story is from her perspective and his. So when he comes, flies tiny into the room. We see her, her you know, sitting there like... What am I doing here? I got nothing in common with these people. I don't know anyone anymore. So she gets up and uh, leaves, goes home. She's wandering the streets. Uh, uh, the Adam, uh, let's call him the Adam. The Adam follows her. Uh, we learn that she um, she lost her husband. It seems recently. Uh, I mean, uh, I guess quite recently, based on something else that happens in the story. Uh, he told her to, you know, he'll never leave her alone. He told her, not leave her alone. He'll never abandon her. She'll never be alone again. And he told her to drive that night because he was too drunk, but she was also too drunk. I guess they crashed, but she got out of it completely okay. Um, she's, uh, you know, she's thinking, oh, what unlucky car is going to end my miserable life? That kind of thing. And then she says, uh, no, I need to do this myself. She keeps wandering the streets for hours. We now go back to the Adam. Uh, she walks into the street and two thugs are uh, planning to jump her, but uh, the Adam uh, fights them and uh, beats them up, uh, saving her, even though she's already walking far away. He almost forgets about good old Jen for a moment. And then he flies uh, after her and follows her home. She opens up the door. Um, we see her apartment's a bit of a mess. 
There's a, a picture there, I think, of her and her husband, but there's also a baby, which is weird. Because there's no mention of that baby, unless that family, that was a photo of, I don't know, her family or her husband, her late husband's family. I have no idea. Um, the Adam flies after her, she goes into the bathroom, she says, I think I wanted to be a dancer. Or maybe that was a dream. And then we move to the Adam. He's sitting outside of her bathroom door. And yeah. And then he says, man, she's been there for a long time. I'm going in to check on her. And when he goes in, she's uh, she cut her veins. She's already dying, so he whooshes into her cut. And managed to um, hold his breath and put her artery together so she's not bleeding out then he's floating in her bloodstream and he hears two heartbeats and uh, she's pregnant there's a well it already looks like quite a big baby it's definitely not a fetus then he we see him then fly out of, which i can only assume out of her vagina because he's he appears out of the washer, which, I mean, he was in the womb before this, so come on. This has got to be where he came out of, right? I mean, yeah, I, well, unless, unless maybe through the navel, I don't know, I don't know. That man is still thinking it's a vagina. And he goes into her ear and he starts, uh, starts talking to her, get her perspective. She's, um... She hears someone talking to her, she's like, someone needs me. Then the next scene, she's uh, in the hospital. She has, uh, someone brought her roses. Um, he's saying, I don't even understand what happened, but now I have, but now in uh, not eight, eight months, I'm going to have a beautiful baby. Uh, her husband name is ne husband's name is Neil, so she says, I'm going to have Neil's baby. And she's uh, very happy. And then we go outside to the Atom, dressed... I know he said he looked like a dork in the suit. But what he wears in the last panel, he also looks like a dork. And then I mentioned something turned... Yeah, I think I did something turned him 17 again. Anyway, you know, he says uh, sometimes being a hero is not about fighting an alien invasion. Or the bad guy. Sometimes it's uh, just saving someone's life. Okay. So that was the story, but overall it was nice, but yeah, a few things. First of all, I, okay, she was his date. I sort of assumed maybe there's a stronger connection there, that he followed her home. Which, I mean, in context of the story, it's a good thing he did, but, but why? Did he send something? Was he worried about her? I mean, yeah, she, you know, didn't look like she used to, but... You know, it will change as we age, so I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's a tad bit weird and doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, I get if she was his maybe girlfriend and for a long time, you know, went back to check on her, but I don't know. Because I just forgot to mention, when she leaves the high school to go home, she passes by the photo of her and the Atom, and she says, uh, you know, uh, Ray, you, know, you you made it big, you're in the Justice League. So, obviously she knows about him. In case they had a connection, but how deep is she? Yeah, I, I don't know, I feel like they should have made a stronger connection between the two of them instead of, you know, them just being dates in high school for the prom. Because Ray doesn't seem to know what happened to her in the meantime. He doesn't, doesn't seem to have any idea. So I'm guessing their connections got severed after high school. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a bit bizarre. It's still good that he was there, but also a bit weird. Now another thing is, what, what is with the picture of the baby? Did they have, did she and Neil have a baby before this? Did they lose the baby? Like, well, what happened? Again, maybe this is a photo of her family or his family, you know, of them when they were kids or babies. 
And if not, then it's a bit weird. I mean, wouldn't she have mentioned not only did I lose uh, Neil, I also lost my baby, my first baby? And I, don't, I don't know. And I think that they would have mentioned it, right? Also, if she's just a month pregnant, how, did, how didn't that baby look like a fetus? I mean, he looked like more of a grown baby. And, yeah. And I, I just found those things a bit weird. And maybe I'm wrong, I've never actually seen a month old fetus. So, who knows, maybe they... They understand they kind of look like an alien at that stage, don't they? I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, overall, the story was nice. Art was maybe a bit better, still not not a huge fan of it, but it was okay. It was okay overall, I uh, enjoyed the reads here. Somewhat. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, I kind of wish the other half of the, um, the, the Firestorm story was here, but it, nah, I guess they wouldn't because, you know, money. So they put it in another comic, so you have to buy another one to find out what happens. But yeah, I mean, the, the best drawn thing here, I must say, is the cover. And that's it, but overall, I, uh, oh, it actually appears on Goodreads now, so I gave it a three on Goodreads. It was, uh, it was nice. So yeah, that's it, so, um, all right, folks, so let me know if, uh, if you read the showcase, what did you think about it? Can you tell me a bit about uh, Firestorm and the Atom? Uh, what versions these are, there are more. And that's it. Alright, now remember, collect what you're passionate about and share it on YouTube. Bye!